we're going to spend the first part of the semester talking about actuators, and so let's define actuation. An actuator is something that allows a control system to turn a control signal into a driving action. So that could be a pneumatic device, a hydraulic, or electrical, or mechanical systems. So right now we're going to look at, in this video, um, fluid actuators. So that would be pneumatics and hydraulics. There are a few differences between pneumatics and hydraulics uh, owing just to the compressibility of the fluid. So pneumatics uses air, which is compressible, and hydraulics use some kind of oil, which is an incompressible fluid. And as you see here, hydraulic power is usually used for uh, precise control of large forces. It's more expensive, um, and pneumatic power is for quick and less powerful systems. Uh, and pneumatics are not as uh, precise in their positioning as hydraulics. Here's an example hydraulic system, and you can see some of the components that are typical. Um, we've got the reservoir or sump and a pump, which is driven by an electric motor. And then uh, that supplies pressure to an actuator. And between the two there is a bypass valve or a pressure relief valve which vents pressure in case uh, it goes above a safe limit. And also there's a directional control valve shown here and so this is used to uh, change the direction of this actuator. Um, and we'll look at directional control valves more later. There are pros and cons to pneumatic and hydraulic systems. And like I said, hydraulic systems are used to drive high power devices. Uh, they're more expensive um, than pneumatic systems. Um, and also, hydraulic systems have problems with leakage. And uh, since the fluid is oil, uh, that can be dirty or uh, contaminate the system. So it's common to see hydraulic actuators in places like food processing plants where there's no concern uh, about, or where you'd have to be concerned about um, the leakage of the fluid. Pneumatic systems can be used to provide control signals to uh, final control devices. And so the reason you would use a pneumatic signal instead of an electronic signal, so there can be a blend of electronic and pneumatic uh, signals in a control system. You might want to use uh, pneumatic signals for devices that require a large force um, to switch, like some valves. If you have a large valve, you could use a pneumatic signal to switch that valve. And we'll look at uh, pneumatic switching later on um, in the coming lectures. Back to hydraulic systems, um, there are several different types of pumps that are used and here is the most common one, it's called a gear pump. <coughs> and it's made up of two gears with interlocking teeth and as they turn it takes in the fluid and the fluid then passes along in between the gears and the pump wall and it's compressed to the outlet port. Now the advantages of this uh, devices that it's simple and therefore robust, so uh, it's a reliable system. Um, but there's a fair amount of leakage between the teeth and the pump wall, and so the efficiency of this uh, design is, is limited. Here are components of a typical pneumatic system. Um, there can be a filter and a silencer. Uh, before the compressor to reduce noise. And again, the compressor is driven by an electric motor. Uh, likewise to the hydraulic system, we have a pressure relief valve for safety. And now, since we're dealing with a compressible fluid, uh, with the temperature increases after compression. Um, the volume goes down and the temperature goes up. And so there could be a cooling uh, device. And after that, you'd want to trap the water to remove moisture from the air 
and then also filter it. And the last component shown here is an air receiver. So this is a big tank that adds volume to the system. So you can store energy here and it also serves to smooth out fluctuations in pressure. Uh, the next couple slides show a couple of uh, typical compressors for pneumatic systems. This is a rotary vane compressor where you have this eccentrically mounted rotor with vanes that can move radially. And so as the rotor turns, the vanes extend to uh, follow the pump wall. And a pocket of air is taken in at the inlet port. And that pocket of air has its volume reduced until it reaches the outlet port. Another um, design is the rotary screw compressor. And it works similarly in that it takes in a pocket of air and reduces the volume until the outlet port. Um, typical performance for this design, um, you'll have higher flow rates possible and higher output pressures possible than with the rotary vane compressor. Valves are the next topic and we'll leave that for the subsequent video.